Hey everybody, it's Joe from GreenLightSound.com, and today we're going to take a look at a relatively new plugin from THX that's coming out through Plugin Alliance, and that's the THX Spatial Creator, which is a plugin within your DAW that helps you create spatial audio mixes or sort of to add elements of spatial audio, surround audio to any source without any special playback system or other codecs. Basically, you're creating virtual surround in a virtual environment for surround playback on headphones. So let's just jump right into the controls to begin with. The main interface here is sort of a virtual representation of the source, the listener here, and the speaker's position in time. To basically move the controls, we have this tool called the Gizmo tool, which we can then just kind of move around, drag around to change the spot of that speaker's source position. We can either do the center, we can change just the vertical or horizontal axis. We can move this sort of 3D representation around and move the speaker around that way. You notice when you move this, you're also changing the controls over here in source parameters. So this is really like the dial in where the speaker position is located. You can either choose spherical or Cartesian. I'll, I'll stick with spherical first. Then we have the azimuth controls, which is negative 182, positive 180 degrees around you on the horizontal plane. That's the same thing as the X control if you're in the Cartesian mode. Elevation is minus 90 to plus 90 degrees here in the vertical plane here, same as the Y axis in the Cartesian mode. The distance here is one meter minimum to whatever your room size is maximum, and that will change the top number depending on how big the room you choose is. This motion tab right here is really cool because this allows you to avoid automation, sort of complex automation, where you'd have to automate the X, Y, and Z controls to get that source moving within a mix and allows you to have that dynamic sound source movement internally within the plugin. Uh, basically, we have presets here for different kinds of motion. We have a run button here, which is a manual start and stop for the motion feature. You can automate this run button on or off to only have that source move at certain times. The flip button right down here controls which direction the motion pattern will follow. We've got speed here for how fast the source travels from one second to 30 seconds. And our scaler is quick access to the relative size of the animation. The bottom left panel here in acoustic parameters, HRTF is how the audio reaches the listener position before the room acoustics and reflections are sort of factored in. We have a gain, we have high quality versus standard quality mode. If the source is one spot, I would stick with high quality mode. If you're in the motion section, it's gonna automatically default to standard quality because it has to recalculate those reflections so much more in high quality. For our size, we've got our virtual room, a bunch of different rooms to choose from, and the dimensions of the room right down here in width, length, and height. We can even further tweak the room space within the room panel here. And the filter here is basically a high shelf EQ for the reflection. So if you want a darker or brighter room. On the far right hand side, we've got our master parameters with an input and output meter. Input balance here. And this is important because stereo tracks in this plugin get summed down to mono to allow that single point of the source on that virtual speaker location. If you want a stereo track, you can either duplicate it and pan each one hard left and right here, or you could split the stereo track into multi-mono and process each left and right side separately that way. But this input balance allows you to slide to which side of the stereo track you hear, either only left, only right, or some blend of the two in between. We've got our master gain, self-explanatory, and a treble and bass boost for some further simple EQ tweaking. So now we're just gonna go back to the default settings that the plugin is set at. I'm gonna bypass the plugin and just play a raw guitar part. Get the idea? If I engage the plugin now at its default setting, here's the sound we get. So you can see it just sounds like it's in a bigger space here. That's because our room is the factory setting. We can go small to bathroom. or we could choose any other one we want. How about a, a large club? And if we take that gizmo tool, we can drag the track around in this virtual space. And in that case, if you've got headphones on right now, it even sounds like it's behind you. A 
of course, we could also use the source parameter controls to move it around that way. Or go to the motion panel, pick long oval, for example, run it. And now it's like that speaker's moving around our head. Different one. Right auto pan. How about circle around head here? Let's do it in a bigger space. Let's go to giant tank here. When I hit flip, it went the other way. I'll hit run. It's going back to its normal position here. You can change that room again. How about we go to Bright Studio? You can hear it's just a really cool way on headphones to get that effect of surround sound without any other special playback equipment. As long as you've got a regular pair of stereo headphones, you can get that effect that way. And it's a really simple plugin to use, which is really cool. I can imagine situations using this where you would put it on an effect send and kind of have the effects moving around the room, maybe feel like you're in the center of a band rehearsal where you're going to have instruments coming from all directions around you. So many really cool applications in the mixing space here. Of course, you could use it in any other space too. If you're doing voiceovers, music for film, whatever. Within the DAW, really easy to use. So really highly recommended the THX Spatial Creator, a great and easy way to build those spatial audio mixes or add those elements of spatial surround audio to whatever sources you want. If you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already so we can keep you in the loop as to what's coming up next. And I'll see you in the next one.